Ah, uh, I know it's a dark video, ladies and gentlemen. It's a little dark outside. <laughs> I just gotta tell you this story real quick. But what is good, what is good, what is good, little, little, little ladies and gentlemen. Of course, you know who I be, the good Dr. Dr. Mark TV, back again once again. <laughs> With an instant classic, man. Um, I decided to go to a strip club here in the United States for the first time ever in my entire life. And I have to admit, it was probably the worst mistake that I've ever made. All right, I want you guys to take this into consideration. I want you to put this into context. I left, I left the United States when I was 17, so I wasn't even old enough to go to the strip club before I left. Then I went to the Philippines. I had my own fair share of strip club experiences in the Philippines. And for the first time since I've been back, Meaning after coming back on frequent trips, the first time I ever went to a male gentleman club, aka the script club, it was probably the worst mistake in my life. Um, I am not one to define what beauty is because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But when I'm in the back of the club because I ain't got no money. I'm just there to enjoy the show. Literally, I'll buy a drink, sit there and enjoy the show. That's literally all it was there for. I'm not there to throw ones on the stage. I'm sorry. I'm not that guy. You ain't going to get me the trick, especially in the United States. That is not happening. But when I got guys in my ear talking about, damn, she's fine this, damn, she thick this, damn, she look like this and this, this, this and this. And I'm looking at the girl that they're talking to and the girl looks like she's shaped like a mat truck. That's when I realized just how bad life in the United States is and how the mentality of most men and what they consider to be thick and what they consider to be attractive, how my my level of attraction to certain women and their level is just two different levels. I mean, even when I go into the stores and I see guys hella attracted to girls that I kind of feel are bad built. Who am I to say what is attractive and what not? Because people will look at me and say I'm an ugly motherfucker. And they, and they, and they, in, in, in their opinion, they would be right in their own opinion. Because again, it's an opinion. They would be right to say what they want to say about what they think about me. But if we could come to a general consensus about how guys <sighs> define thick versus fat. That'll be what encompassed everything that happened to me at this club tonight. Bruh. Them some, them some fat girls, bruh. I'm talking about, I promise you, I shit you not. I could see it from the back of the club. Maybe I went to the wrong club. I might need to try this at a couple of other clubs. But the club that I went to, I thought was pretty much a decent one in my area. But then again, you guys know I'm from small town North Carolina. So I guess decent and upscale probably, <laughs> probably ain't as decent and upscale as I think it is. But again, this is my first experience. But I saw chicks with c-section scars you know the stretch marks on the ass cheeks you know and what they tried to do though right and this is the shit that had me rolling is they tried to like tattoo over it and i think this is normal in my particular community it's normal in society that if you have like scars and stuff you try to tattoo over it to try to make it look okay like so if you got stretch marks on your ass cheeks what you were doing is you were tattooing like butterflies you know how you got one side of the butterfly on one ass cheek and the other side of the butterfly on another butt cheek that was kind of what i was seeing or like they would have like the belt like that underbelly tattoo like the little flames and shit it was just it was bad i don't really dig tramp stitch tramp stamps period the back tats and like that belly shit <sighs> I don't really do tattoos at all. I'm accepting of it to an extent, but I was losing it. But every girl that came on stage, coming to the stage, cinnamon and sugar, and coming to the stage, waiting to exhale, and coming to the stage, big mama, <laughs> big mama's house, bruh, it was all bad. And it let me further realize I have no problem saving money, and I'm not going to have a damn problem saving money in here but until I'm able to go back home because my level of attraction to anything around here, my level of attraction of any type of activity, COVID or not, just ain't going to work. And you would think that a gentleman's club would be shut down, right, during COVID times. Let me, let me, let me lay this out for you. Um, it was open but there was limited capacity that's that's how it was able to function so 
just in case you were wondering, like the max capacity at any given time in the club before COVID and all that stuff, 100 plus people or whatnot. But at this time, I think that they trimmed that number down to maybe 20, 30, maybe a max of 40. And there was a, a decent crowd. That's why I was able to disappear in the back or at least sit at the bar and nobody was bothering me. But I promise you this. Tonight was the first night that I realized just how bad it is in the United States, ladies and gentlemen. Just how the mentality of us men have really come full circle in reference to what we define as beauty, what we define as beautiful, what we define as thick, what we define as fat, and how the argument in all of those are all justified because everything is based on opinion. It's based on preference. But how I look at it, and I'm truly blessed to have found my way out. I'm going to be honest. I know I made this video dark. I did it for a reason. Shit, I wanted it to be dark. <clears throat> But I'm happy. I'm happy that I'm, the, I'm one of the very few that made it out. Whew. <laughs> a lot of people would be like, Doc, man, you left the Matrix, man. You were living that life overseas in the Philippines, man. Why come back to this? Business, baby. And that's the only reason I come back to this. Trust me, my level of attraction to any woman around here is... <laughs> No, 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 no. Let me take that back. There are some very, very beautiful, attractive women in the United States. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me be real. Let me stop the show because I might say some shit that'll get me in trouble and would be false. There are very, very attractive women in the United States. Plenty. But in reference to the ones that I saw in a strip club tonight, it let me further know why I don't go to strip clubs in the United States. It let me further know why I have chosen to alleviate myself or to deviate myself or to eliminate myself from any situation or scenario wherein I am required to spend money on women on that particular aspect you dig but it was fun it was an experience I mean I didn't go alone I went with a friend so it was all good man it was it was interesting it was different and quite frankly everything that I'm seeing now just makes me further and further blessed and further and further appreciative of the opportunity that I was given to study abroad, man. I owe that one to my dad and my mother. Facts. All right. So again, I'm just thankful that I was able to go. <laughs> you got to realize, man, I'm my mom's youngest son. She didn't have to let me go. You know, so at the end of the day, I'm just truly blessed, man. And I'm happy, happy to be home, but blessed to know that Whenever I want to leave, I can leave at any given moment in time because it's not a financial issue that is keeping me here. It's a business opportunity and a contract that I must fulfill in order to put some money in the bank so I can get back to business as usual. But only after COVID will I be able to make my move. Again, guys, expect that to be around 2021. Don't, don't believe that you're going to be moving anytime before 2021. I don't know how you guys feel about life in the United States. I'm just letting you know that ever since I've been back, I've been gaining new experiences. This is the realness. You got to realize I was a kid. I was a kid when I left the United States. I mean, and even when I came back, I focused on work and I focused on getting my vacation back. And that was it. That was all I ever focused on. But now that I've been blessed enough to at least have a little bit more financial freedom to my name, I mean, I'm not completely free but I've been able to do a lot more I've been able to experience a lot more and I'm learning every day how how much I appreciate my time in life experience overseas my time in life experience outside of the United States I got a lot of friends and you guys know this that never leave the block a couple of them never leave the city they damn sure don't leave the state they think traveling to Las Vegas is a vacation. They think that's going abroad, traveling to Vegas and shit like that, going out to Cali. You know, they go over to the West Coast. They think that's traveling. And it is to an extent, but that's not traveling abroad. I want to give credit to people who go to Cancun, Mexico, or, or to Canada, but those are places you could drive to if you wanted to. I'm talking about places that have you traveling thousands of miles away from your own home country, putting you outside of your comfort zone and making you have to adapt yourself to a different culture and a different breed. I don't think that you're required to adapt in Vegas. I don't think you're required to adapt in LA. I don't think to an extent, well, you are required to adapt in Mexico and down in, um, and up in Canada, but the adaptability is very limited, you know? But don't get me wrong, hell, even I wanna go to Mexico. I do, I do. But anyways, that's, that's neither here nor there. I just think that 
my experience is being able to live abroad has really come full circle and now I'm able to really show my appreciation by experiencing things that I didn't get a chance to experience when I was a baby. That was, that's the best way to put it when I was a child. 17 years old, wet behind the ears, didn't know a damn thing about nothing. But now, I'm just feeling it, man, and it's fun. All right, guys, man, this has been a good Doc, Dr. Mike TV. Making this video in low light, hell, I couldn't help myself. I just got out the club. I got as far away from it as humanly possible. Now I got to go take a shower to get that to get that club stench off of me, okay? But I do want to note this, though, before I leave. Let me, let me note this. Philippine clubs are not always that much better, okay? I've been to some hole-in-the-wall places in the Philippines that smell like mildew, and there is just no way in this world you're going to get that club smell out of your clothes. You might as well just throw the clothes away after you finish at these clubs. But I have been to some pretty high-end bars. Shout-out to my boy Mike. We, we've had some experiences and things that I wish that I could share on the channel, but we just it's, it's just not worth it. We've had some great times and some, and some rough times. But, uh, yeah. The club scene, Makati area, I think they do a pretty good job. But there are some expensive places in the Philippines too. But you get the best of both worlds. Here in my small town, we just get one side of the world. Like, oh, we get the best of one world, and that's just small town North Carolina world. And yeah, that's it, man. Again, just wanted to share this video. I'm not going to have any video accompanying this. talking. About, I'm just sharing my experience, and I hope that you guys were able to enjoy it. hope you guys were able to feed off of it, become knowledgeable, and I hope that this experience, whether I shared it in a way that you liked or not, I hope that it would encourage you to at least attempt to want to go abroad. Attempt to see something different outside of your little small town area, wherever you are in the world. Again, this has been a good Doc Dr. Mike TV, and with that being said, I am officially out at Elise Nako. Pa'alam, which means I am going now. Uh, bye bye. As always, love you guys. Mawakita. Mabuhai. Peace.